Wang Wei, on the ninth day of the ninth month, remembering my brothers east of the mountain. Alone, a traveller in a foreign land. I miss my family twice as much when a holiday passes. Back there, I know my brothers are climbing a hill. This year, there's one fewer to gather dogwood. So, uh, we continue with the heptasyllabic quarterings, and here we have just one sample of Wang Wei, a poet we've encountered before quite frequently. He is one of the best represented poets in the anthology and is generally considered to be one of the greatest Chinese poets of all time. Probably, uh, we're not going to make rankings here, but he's definitely among the top three Tang Dynasty poets, probably the third one, <laughs> and uh, generally for all classical Chinese poetry. Okay, so let's go to this uh, poem. Let's start with the title, Ninth Day, Ninth Month, Remembering My Brothers East of the Mountain. The title already introduces you to the topic of the poem, which is going to be separation, more specifically separation from family, even more specifically separation from family on a holiday. Now, this is a topic we've encountered many times before. Being mm, separated from friends or family, or the moment of parting, the moment of separation from friends and family, is a very common topic in classical Chinese poetry. Uh, it rings a bell with uh, with 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 some of the most intense feelings of scholar officials and uh, their, 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 the obligations that they have of moving around and uh, being in service and therefore being away from their roots, whether family or friends. And, uh, you know, in a China society, as family-centered as classical China was, any separation from, 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 from your roots is always perceived as a, an evil, sometimes a necessary evil, but it's an evil. So as I've said, we've encountered many poems like this in the anthology, if I remember properly. I think we probably have encountered also some poem on the ninth day in, or in the ninth month. So in, in, in Chinese traditional beliefs, uh, it was felt that some double dates, I think especially the double dates of odd months, were associated with uh, seasonal change, but also with, with, with danger. So some of the more characteristic um, celebrations in both uh, classical China and, and in the sinosphere, uh, that also affects the courtly life of Japan, are celebrations that take place on double days, generally double odd days, like the third of the third, which is in, in spring, obviously, it's late spring, fifth of the fifth, which is um, mid-summer, uh, the seventh of the seventh, which is uh, the beginning of autumn, and the ninth, the, the double ninth, the ninth of the ninth, which is the, the harbinger of winter. So specifically, the, the double ninth day, sometimes called the Chrysanthemum Festival, is a festival in which it's pretty typical. It's a very, very traditional festival in ancient China. I think the first ever classical poem that was translated from Tang poetry into English was a, a poem I don't remember by which poet, but it was a double day, uh, a double ninth festival poem. So, so, so in this uh, double ninth day, it's typical to drink wine infused with chrysanthemum petals, which uh, is believed to, to grant you uh, a greater lease of life and mortality. And it's also very typical to climb, um, to climb elevations, to climb mountains, to do a little trip that day. And of course, it's double ninth in the Chinese uh, sem lunar, semi lunar solar calendar. The, the, the first month is the beginning of spring. So the ninth month would be the last month of autumn, because then the 10th, 11th, 12th would be the months of winter, which always has negative um, foreboding implications in Chinese poetry. So if being separated from family members and or friends is always poignant, it is doubly poignant when there is a celebration, because that's when the family all gets together and do you know, common activities, celebrations and so on. So the, the, the date is meant to act as an intensifier of the melancholy and sad mm, tone that is meant to be playing in the background of this poem. Uh, as for remembering my brothers east of the mountain, I, I haven't checked any information about that, so I imagine 
Uh, I'm not sure who is, from the title, I'm not sure who is east of the mountain and of which mountain we're talking about. Mm, but, 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 but anyway, <laughs> this is a poem in which clearly Wang Wei is far from his home, probably serving in some position somewhere. Let's take a look at the poem as usual, uh, couplet by couplet. This is a pretty straightforward poem, so don't think there is that much to say about it. But let's take a look. First couplet. Alone, a traveller in a foreign land. I miss my family twice as much when a holiday passes. So the first couplet is pretty straightforward. It, you know, it just directly states the feelings of the poetic persona of one way, whether... That poetic persona matches the one way writing this poem, I don't know, but clearly it's, it's a, a role that we've encountered many times again. There's a traveller, he is far from home in a foreign land, although we must probably not interpret this too literally, like foreign means out of the area where my family lives, but still in China. And uh, because he is a traveller, he misses his family doubly because not only is he far from them, and that's reason enough to miss them, but now it's a holiday the double ninth. So on any festive occasion, he feels doubly sad. And, and, and there is, in this case, a dissonance, perhaps, between the happiness of the celebrate and the celebratory mood of a celebration and the double sadness of clearly being reminded that one is far from the family. So the first couplet really just states um, pretty, pretty, pretty directly and pretty I would almost say prosaically, at least in the translation, what the feelings of one way are. Second couplet um, is of, of the mind extrapolation sort. Like in, in, in a lot of Chinese poems, you get first a description of a situation, uh, whether seen or evoked, and then, and, 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 or, and then you get uh, like the flight of fancy in which the speaker imagines, he feels, he sees, he is in that place that he wants to talk about and which is far away. Sometimes he travels to that place in a dream. So what's happening at home? What is one way imagining that is taking place in his very intensely missed household? Back there, I know my brothers are climbing a hill. This year, there's one fewer to gather dogwood. So what are the brothers doing? Well, they're doing what is typically done on the Double Ninth Festival. There's climbing some sort of elevation or mountain, probably one which Wang Wei knew, one close to his home, in which it might be a family tradition to climb on the Double Ninth Festival. So they're climbing the hill, and the last line ends with this um, indirect statement of his absence, which creates a poetic image. So this year there's one fewer to gather dogwood. His absence from is poeticized or is synthesized in this image of one less person to gather dogwood. I'm not sure what dogwood is. It's probably some type of um, some type of wood that maybe was collected and burned uh, ritually in, in in this day, or, or maybe not ritually, but maybe part of the customs of of this day, whether in general or in one way's family was you know gathering some some of this dogwood and using it for some purpose. But anyway, there's one less hand available. So there's like this emptiness in the group of his brothers, of, of maybe other relatives who are doing this chore. This year, there is a glaring absence. There's this gap. So this, this image of one less mm, wood gatherer really synthesizes the feeling, the sadness, the absence of one way. Uh, one way is generally reputed to be, especially in his nature poems, a pretty... Mm, limpid poet, you no, know, a poet that uses a pretty straightforward language and imagery, not too, not too mm, hermetic or cryptic, at least on the face of it. Uh, definitely not choke laden with uh, literary evocations or, or passages from from the previous literature. But it's in this sort of simplistic poem, or just you know, explaining a, a, a feeling and 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 um, perhaps um, locking it into an image or a metaphor, which, you know, synthesizes the feeling, in, in which uh, Wang Wei probably, and most great classical Chinese poems, excel. 